and this is Job 12 and verse 7. But ask now the beasts, and they shall teach thee, and the fowls of the air, and they shall tell thee. Kal halal Yahweh b'ashem, Yahweh shai b'ashem, rukwa kodash. Double honesty, the apostles and elders of great millstone, where I learned this truth from. Peace and salutations to the brothers on down, teaching, preaching, pushing this gospel. Good news to four corners of the earth, waking up the hopeful elect of Israel. Greetings also to the few sisters that tune into these video epistles. We're carrying on with our unfit to rule. This being part two, beasts hunted to extinction. We're just reaching the climax of this wicked scientist, this mad scientist. You can just imagine him with his crazy hair and his white gown. That's this so-called white man, the Edomite in the scriptures. That's who you are. It's like a crazy person, totally out of his mind with all his various schemes. And so he's at the end of his tether. He's reached the end. Of, the scripture talks about the end of the world, the end of the aeon, the age, this man's rulership. His time is up. So he's just making one final fling to see if he can put some mad schemes together that can extend his time. But he can't. The scripture says he cannot go beyond, beyond the bounds that is marked out for him by who? By our power, the king of terrors, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Yahweh meaning he is he to be. The existing one, his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, what does that mean? He's our redeemer and savior, high priest and mediator in the heavens. He's making, making intercession on our behalf, our who? His children, his brothers. He's made us joint heirs that daring to call us by bywords. Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, we're dispersed, we're scattered. We can look like the other nations. But our bloodline, our seed, goes back to the seed of our fathers, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's who we are. We've woken up, and we know who this man is. He's oppressing the whole earth. The earth was given to him. He has temporary charge of it, Job 9 and 24. But let's go back to Job 12, and let's start now at 4. I am as one mocked of his neighbor who calleth upon the Most High, and he answereth him, The just upright man is laughed to scorn. He that is ready to slip with his feet as a lamp, despised in the thought of him that is at ease. The tabernacles of robbers prosper. That's what it seems like. And they that provoke the Most High, they seem to be secure. Whose hand the Most High bringeth abundantly. But ask now the beast. And they shall teach thee. That's what we want to have a look at in this lesson. And the fowls of the air. And they shall tell thee. What is it that they're telling us? They're telling us the times that we're living in. And this wretched man, this brute beast, he's coming to the end of his time. Let's read it again. But ask now the beast, and they shall tell thee. And the fowls of the air, and they shall tell thee. Or speak to the earth, and it shall teach thee. And the fishes of the sea shall declare unto thee. That's happening right now. All creation is speaking of the time that we're living in. And what time is it? It's the end of this man's age, the end of his rulership. Kingdoms rise and fall is the most high who decides who's in rulership and who's not. And this so-called white man, the Edomite, the devil that the Bible speaks of, we're not going to stop saying it. We know who you are. You're the one who is oppressing the whole of the earth with your madness. Just thinking about this earlier, I was thinking it's like a, a drunkard at a bar. He's been told to have drink up. It's your last drink. We're closing. It's time for you to get out and go home. But he just won't go. It's closing time, Mr. Edom. It's time to leave. He's slobbering all over the place. He won't go home. The scripture, actually, let's go to... Speak about drunk a minute. Let's get... Uh, where are you? Jeremiah 51. 
Let's just read that one verse here. Babylon, verse 7, Babylon have been a golden cup. What's this Babylon? It's Babylon. It's America. Babylon the Great, coded in the scripture with various names. This is the major one that we know. Babylon. Babel, what does it mean a child is babbling? He's not making himself clear. It's all confusion. What does confusion mean? Con is with and fusion is mixed. Babel, mixed. It's all madness. A child is born. You can't put what, what is the gender? It's all confusion. You've got hundreds of varieties. The scripture says he was made male and female. That's what the Most High made. But this man's got all kind of madness going on. Babylon has been a golden cup in the Lord's hand, whose name is Yahweh. We know his name. That made all the earth drunk and the nations have drunken of her wine. That's all a stupid, crazy philosophies. They're, uh, everything that they push, the religion, it's uh, their politics, it's all foolishness. The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her? Take balm for her pain. If so, be she may be healed. Well, she can't be healed. This is all kind of sarcastic, the way this is, is written here in this particular chapter. But we're just focusing on the fact that this man, he thinks he can go on forever. And look at what he's been doing in the earth. I wrote down some... We've got some friendly mosquitoes here. I'm going to get that one like I lost that battle. Right, where were we? This man won't move on. And by the way, anyway, this man goes. We're seeing, um, was it Habakkuk? It is as death, <clears throat> he's as death and destruction. And he just can't be satisfied. So let's have a look, at, for example, I wrote on this before. The bees, for example, remember we're talking about bees being hunted to extinction. This is demonstrating that this man, what man? The Edomite, the white man, he's unfit to rule. This is prophecy that he must move on. He won't move until the Most High sends his son to move him. But these are the signs, the tokens, prophecy that we're looking at in this lesson. And part of this prophecy is the way this man has been governing and ruling the earth. There are three examples here. First one, the bees can live without humans, but we can't live without them, you see. And they have a massive effect on the, the ecosystem, which we looked at in the previous lesson. What is that the definition for the ecosystem? An ecological community together with its environment functioning as a unit. Well, if you remove parts of this natural ecosystem that's been put here, then you're disturbing the flow. And at the end of it, when you're supposed to get the benefit, you don't get a benefit and everything starts to die. You're consuming the wrong things. You're disturbing the system, you see. So we see even by something as small as the bees, we don't, can't get into all of the details in, a, in this type of lesson, but you're disturbing the flow. That's enough. What about the birds? You're spraying all this stuff into the air. And then when the birds are falling out, say, oh my God, you, what a surprise. What's going on? Why are all these birds dying off? So then there's this whole pretense that we don't know why the birds are dying. And yet you're poisoning the air. How can they survive? And what about the massive fish die off? Where these wonderful creatures, they know full well. They throw themselves onto the beach. You think they don't know that they can't live out of the water on the beach? They know, but thousands and thousands of dolphins and whales and all manner of fishes, they have decided they're committing suicide. They can't live under this man's regime anymore. When they cut them open, I often speak about this because it really bothers me. When they cut these poor fishes open, what do they find? Plastics and poison and metals and there's whole islands in the sea floating around of waste products from this man and what he's been producing. What man? It's the Edomite, the white man, the devil in the scriptures. We know who you are. 
and you're the one who's proving yourself unfit to rule and it's your time to go. This is wickedness beyond measure. Let's go to 2 Peter for our next scripture. 2 Peter 2. And let's just read a few verses here starting at 12. This is like a two-fold scripture because this a part of this can be aimed at the Hebrew Israelites. But I'm using it referring to these brute beasts, these people. And you hopefully you'll see that as I read here. 2 Peter 2, starting at 12. But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of things that they understand not. See, this man, he's behaving as if he's the one who's created all the things that are in the earth. But he's having to use what is here. But he's using it wrongfully. And shall utterly perish in their own corruption. And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness. As they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime, spot they are, and blemishes sporting themselves with their own deceivings, while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices. Cursed children, you won't find anyone on the planet more covetous for their neighbor's stuff than this so-called white man, the Edomite. He wants everybody's things. He's got his military bases spread around the four corners of the earth. And anyone who has anything, he gets over to where, finds an excuse, goes to where they are and grabs all of their stuff. He's the big bully in the playground taking everybody's lunch and their lunch money. But you've reached the end of your rulership. And this type of lesson is proof that you are not fit to rule. Total brute beast bringing death and destruction everywhere you go. And the scripture here is saying with covetous practices, cursed children. What's this cursed children? Who are the cursed in the earth? We know we as Hebrew Israelites have some temporary curses on us which are being lifted based on our turning our back on the laws, statutes, and commandments which was given to us and no one else. But there is a cursed people in the earth. Let's see who those are, Isaiah 34. Let's start at 4. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their hosts shall fall down as a leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia. Who's that? It's the Greek way of saying Edom. It's the same people again, that so-called white man, the Edomite in the scripture. The scripture is saying, it is the most high speaking, he's saying, Behold, it shall come down upon Edom, the white man, and upon the people of my curse. What's curse about him? His look, that leprous look. The hue, hue means color in human. It's been withdrawn from this man. It's a marker. You look at him of all the 18 nations. It's the only one that has that look. Now we know that the seed, other people can look like him. But we're speaking about the phenotype. The Edomite, the so-called white man, no blood. His blood showeth forth through his skin. That's the demon, the devil. And upon the people of my curse to judgment. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats. And with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord has a sacrifice in Bosra. This is the capital city of wherever these people are. This, at this time they inhabit America, Babylon the Great. That is the golden cup. That is their headquarters where they gather up all of their wealth. And a great slaughter in the land of Idumia. And the unicorn shall come down with them and the bullocks with bulls. And their land shall be soaked with blood and their dust made fat with fatness. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompenses. This is plural. Recompenses for the controversy of Zion. What's that controversy? You put your hands on the apple of the most hand, on his eye, the apple of his eye, you dare to touch us. 
We are the children of the Heavenly Father. Trace our bloodline to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We are belonging to the Most High. How dare you? And so there's a payback. You're hunting all these animals to extinction. Let's get some more information here. The Greeks and the Romans, they hunted animals for sport and entertainment to fight in their arenas against each other and against these so-called gladiators who we knew were Hebrew Israelites. So they starved these poor creatures, making them desperate and aggressive, you see. And then they put out the Hebrew Israelites and had it as a sport. So while they were treating these animals, starving them more or less to death, and then put them out when they're desperate and they would consume the Hebrew Israelites and they would have that as sport. And they would all be engaging in drunkenness and madness. And we see the same people back. So these, the Greeks, the Romans, and now we're in the extension, the revised Roman Empire. And we see them using us, the Hebrew Israelites, again for the same thing, sports and entertainment and in behind the scenes, signing all the checks, got us all out there having so-called fun while they're behind collecting all of the money as a reward. So nothing new under the sun. I think we're going to read something from the Apocrypha. Let's just get Wisdom and Solomon 3. Let's get the first the last three verses. As for the children of adulterers, they shall not come to their perfection, and the seed of an unrighteous bed shall be rooted out. For though they live long, yet shall they be nothing regarded, and their last age shall be without honor. Or if they die quickly, they have no hope, neither comfort in the day of trial. 19. For horrible is the end of the unrighteous generation. They're so wicked. They can't do any good. We're going to go to the next to finish off. Isaiah 61. Let's start at, let's start at 6. But ye shall be named the priests of the Most High. Men shall call you the ministers of our power. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. For your shame ye shall have double. For And for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in their land they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. For I, the Lord, whose name is Yahweh, Love judgment. I hate robbery. Who's the one who's been robbing and taking everybody's stuff? Who's been heading up that list in Psalms 83? It's that Edomite, the thief and liar and murderer. He's a rapist. That's all he's designed to do. He doesn't know righteousness. There's no repentance for this man. I hate robbery for burnt offering, and I will direct their work in truth, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Who's speaking about? That's the Hebrew Israelite. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles, and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them, that they are the seed which the Lord, whose name is Yahweh, Hashem Yahweh Shai, hath blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my power, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with jewels. For as the earth bringeth forth her bud, this is the same bud that this man has been trying to prevent. He's got us eating plastic food, everything's coming from a lab. No, he's telling you can eat bugs and all kind of abominable, abominable things. But this is saying here, Isaiah 61, verse 11, For as the earth bringeth forth her bud, and as the garden causeth the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God, Yahweh power, will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. Kal halal Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. That's our power. And this wicked man, 
the Edomite. He's eating, he's vomiting, he's shitting at the same time in the same place. There's no separation with these men. He's certainly the most vilest. I think Job called him the most vilest of men in the earth. I'm personally sick of seeing them in the position they're in. Most definitely worn out the saints. So I won't stretch the lesson beyond where it needs to be. You've been listening to Unfit to Rule Part 2 Beasts Hunted to Extinction. Shalom until the next one.